If you hear it, celebrate. If you are chosen, contest. For honour, answer the call to Manchester. in summer green. Yes, and it is summer at last in England. And streaking overhead now in a royal salute to Her Majesty, the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Aces, the Red Arrows, formed in 1965, comprising nine aircraft, the cream of the Royal Air Force pilots and recognised worldwide as the preeminent precision flying formation. Streaming red, white, and blue over the stadium now. You know it's a great occasion when the red Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the national anthem? team tonight. Kathy Freeman, her heart goes out to her and her husband Sandy Bozecker back in Melbourne. It's just great to have Kathy here. She went to the Commonwealth Games first as a 16-year-old. Australia is so strong in swimming, netball, triathlon, squash, cycling, hockey and shooting. Very cross like we saw there a moment ago leading our delegation. But Kathy up the front with Sarah Fitzgerald, alongside of her, our wonderful squash player Liz Ellis, and our netball girls who will start favourites against the Silver Ferns from New Zealand. But what a group we have. Remember that our swimmers are still in Germany and don't arrive until Tuesday. Well, Australia has set the standard first overall in Commonwealth Games medals. We've been competing right from the outset since 1930 at Hamilton in Canada.
a very special runner, Kirsty Howard. She's just six years of age. Her plight has captured the hearts of all throughout the United Kingdom. Born with her heart back to front, she needs an oxygen tank to breathe. She survives largely on sheer willpower, on an extraordinary inner strength and determination. Kirsty Howard. And among her local friends, David and Victoria Beckham. It is my pleasure in this my golden jubilee year to declare the 17th Commonwealth Games open. Welcome to the highlights of the 17th Commonwealth Games. Australia's triumphs in Manchester were truly inspirational. In the pool, our athletes were dominant. At the velodrome, they were majestic. And on the roads and on the track, they took us to new heights. Our sporting heroes have always made us proud. At the 17th Commonwealth Games, new names were added to the long list of great Australian champions. This is Manchester 2002, where the memories will live forever. So Ludi Torki, the gold medal is there for her to take. A backward two and a half somersault with one and a half twist, leaving nothing in reserve, really going for it. Degree of difficulty, 3.4. Needs to score a little over 64 to claim the gold medal. Hasn't won a Commonwealth Games gold medal for Australia. Her best finish fourth in the three metres at Kuala Lumpur. This for gold. And that will do it, no doubt about that, and she'll be ecstatic. And I can't praise Ludi's performance high enough. She's had to follow the Canadians every round, and sometimes there have been a massive scores of 70 to 80 points, and each time Ludi Torki has answered the challenge and in fact had gone better. Lovely dive to finish on. This is our Commonwealth champion. A beautiful back two and a half, one and a half twist. She knows it, Ludi Torki, a wave for the folks back home. Commonwealth Games champion, the gold medal is hers. And Bronwyn Eagles is the first in the order. At the end of this round, they reverse the position, so the leader has the last throw of the competition. So it's pretty important here for a good throw from Eagles. It'd be nice to be the last thrower and have the drop on her competitors in the final three throws. A better release. It's flying out there. It's a huge throw. It's moved her back into the lead. She's already got the gold medal. She can increase her game's record. It's short of 60 metres, but it doesn't matter. Have a look at the celebrations. They've already begun for Lorraine Shaw. She's got the gold, and she's doing a pretty good job of winning the gold medal for celebrations. Justin Ning for Australia. Justin from the uh, Institute of Sport in Canberra. Jaeger, he's doing a good job there. Just needs to keep it swinging. He's going to wind up for his dismount now. Good lead off routine. And we've got a lot more to come. Great job. Now Australia can't be beaten for the bronze closest competitors were five points behind at the end of this rotation and we've posted sufficient score with our first three competitors to hold on to the bronze medal position 
But it'd be great to see Rizzo go through clean. And full front layout, double front. Oh, beautifully done. Double layout, full twist, two good landings out of two. Clearing the floor beautifully with the vendor swings. Dare I say it, I've never seen Phil competing better than this. It's a good day out for him. So a popular win there for England in front of the home crowd. Silver to Canada and then the bronzed Aussies pipping out Scotland for a medal. Performance for England from John Smithhurst on the high bar. Here we go to Sarah Lauren on bars. This is the hardest part of the routine. Where he hit full, gets it around all right. Salto, she's got some leg separation problems on quite a few of her skills. Free hip half is fine. Catches that Jaeger. It's quite a difficult routine. And she's got to nail the dismount. Double front half out well. Good start off routine for Australia. Great start. So Australia 84.075. England, 81.100. Canada in third place on 80.425. Australia streaking ahead. Oh, very hard series. A small overbalance, but nothing too serious. Well done. Afford to underdo it on beam. You really need to put in maximum effort. Change leg leap. Full turning jump, lacking a tiny bit of amplitude. And she's got the dismount to go. If she sticks this, it's going to be a wonderful start for Australia. It's a new one. Hasn't had it in the repertoire for long. Flip, flip. Double. Oh, good job, Jackie Dunn. Australia have the gold in a terrific performance, 111.325. Australia celebrating before the competition's over. I really can't wait for Cadell Evans to start here. He had a fantastic Giro d'Italia this year. He wore the pink jersey the first time an Australian's ever done that. He lost it the very next day. He comes from a mountain biking background here. Fantastic. He's won many World Cup races in mountain biking. I'm talking about a class competitor. Oh, yeah. He's um, got what it takes this guy. As we take a look in slow motion, the intense focus on Cadell Evans' face here. He knows what he has to do. He's put in those two big loops, and he's taken it at 45.51. He's got a nice 108 cushion on Michael Rogers. I tell you what, Cadell Evans at this moment, he has to be looking at the gold medal. One lap to go. So he comes up now to the finish. That's the time he's got to beat, the one of Michael Rogers, his teammate. It's been a stunning performance by Evans. This could mean the gold medal. He won't know until all the other riders have finished, but Evans has posted a formidable time. One minute and 49.29 seconds. That is a terrific ride by Evans and might well be good enough for the gold medal. You know, you, you can dream, but uh, to think that we could get top three in the time trial for me, I, I thought that was a bit beyond, uh, be, bit beyond ourselves, but no, now really, really happy. The gold medalist in Malaysia four years ago. It's going to be close. It's very close, but it's not going to be the gold medal. That goes to Hughes of Canada, but she's doing awfully well to close down the time of Bissett. Yes. And it's a silver medal for Anna Millward. With 50 targets left between them, Australia came home strongly, missing only one target each. Oh. A final score of 187 out of 200 set the standard. The pressure proved enormous for Peel. 
he missed three targets. Teammate Dean rallied and kept the English in contention with a final round of 24 out of 25 shots. With both countries finishing on 187, the final result came down to who performed best in the last round and the green and gold prevailed. I figured we were going to get a going to get a medal. I didn't know which colour, but um, I was amazed when we uh, we got the gold. Yeah. Michael, what happened to you? We're all expecting you to just about perfect rounds. You got a 22 there. What happened there? Yeah, that um, the far ground actually had a, a quite a difficult program. I think it was because they looked so well down there that everybody just took them for granted, so to speak. So, you know, I guess that was a good kicking. I think we all need a kicking every so often <laughs> to pull us back in the gear. And but fortunately enough that um, you know we've come through with flying colours. The women's trap pairs kept the crowd entertained, Australia again in battle with England. The home team of Leslie Goddard and Anita North finished with a combined total of 89, while Australia produced two sensational rounds, Nisa Jenkins and Diane Reeves missing just 10 targets throughout the entire series. Jamison now, she knows that she has got Margaret Simpson from Ghana right on her hammer. It's a pretty good opening throw of 47-37. Well, she used the crowd to great effect during the high jump. She had an equal personal best yesterday. And they're getting behind her here. Second attempt for Jamison. And that's deep into the 46 or 47 metre territory again. There's the coach, Rudolph Sopko. And she's leading the competition at the moment, 48.01. Jane Jamison led after six of the seven events in heptathlon. Margaret Simpson from Ghana was second. Australia's Kylie Wheeler third with Claire Thompson. The final challenge of this intriguing event came with the 800 metres. All the medal chances raced in heat one. But look at Jane Jamison, she is right with Margaret Simpson. Stay there and the gold medal is yours. Claire Thompson moving up alongside Jane Jamison. So whilst we have a race out front, the real race for the medals is behind. There's Kylie Wheeler trying to hang on. Can she hang on and get a medal? She's in third place coming into this event. It's going to be touch and go. So the front runners are Wheeler and Haynes here. Wheeler from... So let's see where Wheeler gets the third. She's got third Wheeler. Now where's Jamison? Jamison certainly got Simpson and Thompson. So Jamison surely with the gold medal. So Jane Jamison's got gold and Kylie Wheeler's got the silver. We're looking at Australia's star performer on the diving board. One metre springboard gold medalist, Arena Lashko, diving for gold medal number two. medals for Arena Lashko of Australia. What a magnificent performance and I can't say enough about Irina Lashko's performance. Her preliminary rounds set up this gold medal. I don't care about this final list. It was incredible under pressure but she had such a lead that everybody was just battling away to catch up that lead and they could never do it. A mistake with defeat but that's all it'll be. A lovely gold medal. 23 gold medals were decided on day three in Manchester, but one of the great moments of the 1998 Commonwealth Games was a victory of Heather Turland, a mother of four in the women's marathon. In Manchester, Australia had three runners, Karen McCann, Krishna Stanton and Jackie Gallagher. All on her own, with a packed house here in Manchester, standing so many of them, appreciating a performance to remember. Hasn't Australia done so well in women's marathon at the Commonwealth Games? Through Lisa Ondiki and Heather Turland and now Karen McCann. What a run. What a day for her. What a day for Australia. Gold, silver and bronze. It's the ultimate test. 
and she's completed it quite brilliantly. She led right from the start, she's dictated the pace, she's kept her form together, and now she can take the salute from the crowd as she heads towards the gold medal. It's all smiles now for Jane Settle, replacing the tears of a couple of years ago. Set a blistering pace, received two warnings, but in the end he kept his form together. And here is Nathan Dixon coming in for his gold medal. He received two warnings early on, but he kept his form together and crosses the line a gold medalist, the second that Australia has received in the walks, following in Jane Savile. Almost set for the final of the women's 400 hurdles. Two Australians here, Jana Pittman and Sonia Brito. Set. Clean start. Pittman away pretty well, so was Brito. So from the inside, Walker Danvers, Pittman at the first. And then Paris, Brito, Dudgeon and Horton. Pittman holding back a little. Paris going hard down the back straight. They're about level at this stage with Dudgeon out wide. Paris and Pittman still about level as they come up the halfway. Pittman starts to accelerate into that hurdle. Moves up to Paris, Dudgeon out wide and then Brito. Pittman's taken the lead. Danvers down in lane two. Jana Pittman leads from Debbie Paris. Leads by two metres into the stretch. Brito's in fifth place. Pittman about three metres in front. She was rough there. Danvers is coming home hard. Two to get over. Pittman leads by four. Five metres over Paris and Danvers. Stumbles a bit at the last. Gets over it. She's home. Danvers falls over. And Pittman's away. And the 19-year-old's going to win brilliantly. 54-41 over Paris. And in third place, Horton. Well, I went out there to run my own race, and at the very last minute, Dion Hemmings pulled out, and I think I was a little bit stirred. Um, to be honest with you, I gutsed it today rather than running a nice, fluent race. Time to beat 35.448, sent by Jules Pording. 500 metres is a flat-out effort. Critical to get out the start block. Good start. She anticipated that well. Really see her getting into the gear now. Important build speed down the back with this first foot coming up. At 250 metres, down the back into the first bend, sitting down now and still trying to build speed here. She comes up for the bell in the first split, and it looks like, yeah, she's under 20. She can so low on the track as she went round the bend. She's got it all to do, of course, still, but if she carries on the way she's going, then she'll certainly be in the medals. Kerry Mears coming round the final bend, one of the time being, looks good, it's sensational. Australia's Philip Rizzo has gymnastics in his blood. His dad and brother both competed at international level. And last year, Philip became the first Australian to medal at a world championships. The individual all-round event was his chance to make a mark in Manchester. We join competition with the final apparatus, the horizontal bar. This is his best apparatus. Takes it right to handstand. <laughs> Scoop in, half out, very nice. He's got to catch this. Whoa, well done. <laughs> Showing his experience on this apparatus. The dismount is essential. Oh, what a very good routine from Rizzo. It was a 9.5. That is excellent. That is outstanding. The battle for gold unfolded in the men's double trap pairs with Michael Diamond and Russell Mark in a showdown with a relentless Indian duo. The pressure was intense. After winning gold in day two of competition, Diamond struggled with his emotions, missing seven targets in the first series. Mark maintained the team's balance, shooting 49 out of 50 first up. His second round, he missed just two. Relief for Diamond as he watched the clay targets turn to dust more often the second time round. India found themselves in a similar situation. Both countries managed 184 out of 200 targets. Gold rested on a countback. 
Diamond and Mark's final round totaled 92, two targets less than India on 94. India claimed its second gold medal in shooting at this Commonwealth Games meet. Australia took silver while England claimed bronze. Australians were captivated by Tatiana Grigorieva when she collected a silver medal in the pole vault at the Sydney Olympic Games. Since then, she's become one of Australia's highest profile sportswomen, even releasing her own range of pyjamas. But all that's secondary now as she focuses on winning gold at Manchester. Strange silence in the stadium. Real look of determination on the face of Grigori Ava as she comes in. Goes up and over. Now you're allowed to clap and cheer. A big smile from Grigori Ava as she goes over 4.35 and sets a new game's record. And that ovation deserved the bronze medal going to three athletes, including Australia's Bridget Isworth. Now this is a tricky vault for Alana. It's also got a 9.7 start value. She needs to just trust her technique. Sometimes she can freeze a little bit. So Yushenko with a one and a half twist. Looks good. Well. <laughs> What a difference to yesterday. She pulled that vault in yesterday, today, no such thing. But certainly great landing, very good position in the post flight. And it's going to score well. 9.268, the average of the two vaults. The leader in the competition, Australia's Alana Slater. So the Australian pair finishing 1-2 with Canuck Vanessa Malock taking the bronze. Just to keep the concentration going, finish this routine off. Can he do it? Oh, oh. my goodness. <laughs> oh, just. I thought he was going to go at the death. Yes, yes, I think he's going to do it. 9.162. Yes, Philip Rizzo continuing his brilliant form here in Manchester with a gold medal performance. Finishing those Healy turns nice and high. Short on his Felger, giant to double tuck. Yes, it is. 9.375. Rizzo's in the lead. The unstoppable Rizzo with another gold over Kikuchi of Canada and Englishman Smithhurst. Here's the lineup. Not starting Beverly McDonald. So a field of seven that's significant. She was probably the third favourite. Ferguson and Campbell are the two, but Ferguson the favourite. Hewitt and Cripps, two Australians in the final. Ferguson away pretty well. She runs up to Campbell. Cripps got a reasonable start with Matawaka. Hewitt going fairly, but Ferguson clearly in front early. Mayers has run a good bend. Ferguson leads into the stretch clearly. Two, three metres in front of Campbell. Hewitt over on the right having a pretty good run. Cripps out of it. This has got to be fast. Lauren's got a chance for a medal. She will get third. Ferguson beats Campbell and Hewitt. So Campbell and Hewitt do what they did four years ago and run second and third. But Ferguson's done the double. Myrie Smith robs Misa Bakri past the goalkeeper. Great dive. Joe Banning gets a second. Here's Tammy Cole who's come on after a rest. Cole. Myrie Smith with the deflection. Oh, just poked him. So Ua Dobson gets a hat-trick, and Australia get goal number 18 in the 67th minute. 
The gold medal favourites had nine different goal scorers. The 18-0 result is the Hockey Roos' biggest ever win. Ski shooting proved to be a daunting prospect for many, with only three countries in the Commonwealth willing to give it a shot. In its debut at the Games for women, Australia, Canada and England battled for the one gold medal up for grabs. Oh. Australia's Lauren Ogilvy and Natalia Rahman and England's Pinky Legrell and Susan Bramley showed their diversity during their first round. Both pair shot 46 out of 50 targets. With the family close by for moral support, Australia grabbed gold. Thank God. That's all I can say now. It's such a big relief when we knew there was gold. I suppose that's the only colour you really want anyway. But uh, um, I suppose it was just really, it was really close in the end and we knew what we, that we had to both shoot really well and um, just really relieved that we were able to do it in the end. She wants the gold, she has to do a great landing here. She does! Wow, what poise this young girl has. 15 tomorrow. Are you excited, Liz Chetkovic? Well, I must say I am uh, a little bit excited. It's great to see her performing well. It's going to be tight. 9.412, she's got the lead. Possibly the gold. And it was the gold. A nice early birthday present there with that gold medal to Sarah Lauren, who turns 15 today, Australian time. The big names have come out to play on day five. Here's the lineup three Australians, Craig Stevens in lane two. Wasn't too far outside his personal best today. Ian Thorpe in four and Grant Hackett in five. Graham Smith also ran really, swam really well. His mum, Margaret's in the stands tonight. There she is. He's the current Olympic World Commonwealth Champion and World Record Holder. Here's the World Short Course Record Holder. Silver medalists in the World Champs to Ian Thorpe and at the Commonwealth Games. Take your mark. Let's see if Thorpe's first up, Hackett first up, but Thorpe in front early as he was in the heat today. Thorpe by two body lengths over Hackett. Good turn off that wall, very fast, very fast off the turn. 12 individual long course world records he set, 17 in total. Has the seven fastest times in the 400 ever. 340.17 he's gunning for. He's got to break 55 for this, this last 100. There's the line. Can he do it? It's close. It's really close. Does he go under 340? Stretches, touches. Uh, he's got it. He's got it. He's got the world record. 340.08. Hackett, 343. There's his mum, Margaret. Start list for the 4x1 Australia from 4. South Africa, Canada, England are the big countries in terms of pedigree and form. Here's our boys, look good. Ashley's already swimming the event, I think. He wants to get up there and go. And, uh, you know, he, he, he could do anything off the lead. So the Australians from lane 4. Showman is really quick here in lane five from South Africa. He's a fast man. A really long start. He got away half a body length. That, that's phenomenal distance. Turns well. Australia strikes the lead to 1.7. The gold medal's in the keeping now. Canada having a battle with South Africa and England. Thorpe so smooth over the water. 
Two body lengths in front. A terrific scrap for second between Canada and South Africa and England trying to come home. But Thorpe is coming home. The Commonwealth Games record of 3.17 is going to go. Australia's done it. 3.16.4. Second, South Africa, I think. And third, Canada with England in fourth place. Great start for Australia. Is that what the plan was? Oh, of course. I had to get the team off to a decent start, and I felt that I did that tonight. And the guys, the three guys that swam after me, did an awesome job, and what a great team effort. Here he is to get the applause of the crowd, and also, more importantly, the gold medal for Australia. A fantastic performance from Deeks. He fought through the pain barrier, quite literally, and now he wins the gold medal. Silver will go to New Zealand, and the bronze will go to Canada. Take your ball. Hickman's a good technician. Norris has got a good chance to watch him closely. Both the Englishmen were up quickly. Parry and Hickman Ramsey got a really good start in lane number two. Norris was very strong in the second half of the race today. Hickman is out very fast. In fact, I think it's a little bit of an overswim here, but he looks very good. He's inside the Commonwealth record, Hickman, by quite a way. You can see that Norris is back in fourth place. I wouldn't write Heath off, Heath Rams here, but he's looking good. In fact, he's gone out and he never does that. If he can get out in there, he'll be very tough at the end. He's got a, he, he really has good endurance. Heath Ramsey top the screen in lane two. You can see Justin Norris in the middle coming through. James Hickman leads by about a body length over Justin Norris, Stephen Parry. The halfway split. Now 55-7-6 is the Commonwealth record halfway split. They are way inside that. That's Norris. World, world record speed. Norris has moved to second. Ramsey in fourth and Parry third. Hickman's got a good break. Can Norris mow him down? Parry third, Ramsey fourth. Good battle here, England versus Australia. You can see them across the pool. Hickman has a substantial lead. Norris is very strong. The Commonwealth record's 156-17. The split here is 125-51. Norris closes. Hickman normally turns well. It's down to half a second. Still inside Commonwealth record pace. But Norris is finishing hard, and Hickman comes back to him a bit. Norris might have hit that third 50 a bit hard, although he's still holding together. But Hickman is hurting now big time. But Parry is coming up. Hickman's got to keep that going. Norris has hit the front over Hickman and Parry and Ramsey. Norris is away. Puts half a body length on Hickman. Parry finishing well. Parry's got up to second. Norris is holding him. Will he get the Commonwealth record? It's close. He doesn't, but he gets the gold medal. A terrific swim. He gets the Commonwealth Games record. What a great swim by Justin Norris there. A brilliant result for Justin Norris with a Games record and his best time since Sydney. Gold medal is already Yurik Sarkisian's. The 40-year-old from Australia... A set of silvers from KL. He wants to go one better now. 125 kilos. That's sheer power. A little bit of a look around. Judges loved it. Three white lights. Smash from Goff, another good one. The Australian fights on. 4-10. But two serves coming Singapore's way. And that's it. The gold medal in the women's team final is headed to Singapore. A commanding team performance and they beat Australia three matches to love in the final. It has been... Uh... Quite an interesting points race this with the new system of 10 points for lapping the field. The three Australian women have got control of the peloton again right at the front. And the one doing the work is the champion elect. She, she is now concentrating on trying to drag her two teammates into the medal position as well. So, Catherine Bates, the gold in the bag. Can she get silver for Rochelle Gilmore? There's an outside chance that this woman here, number 39, Alison Wright, could get the bronze. But it is a slim one, I have to admit. But it is possible, Mike. Three to go, two and a half. Yes, that new, the rule change has definitely helped this race. It's made it very interesting. 
and even so the, the race for the silver and bronze medal is still on regardless of the lap because the two Australians who are vying for the silver medal Gilmore and Wright weren't in that breakaway so that, I think the rule change has done, done good for this type of racing well the pressure is on it's three Australians versus the rest of the world Omer is the spoiler of this as she hits the front and a huge huge effort here being made by Zubrix now that's not supposed to happen said the Australians they've let her go they're on a shoulder now here comes Rochelle Gilmore and Alison Wright for the medals if they can get the points shoulder to shoulder in the sprint for the line Gilmore will get the silver Wright scores as well and we we'll are wait and see she's going to be desperately close it might be on Lucky fourth, though, for Alison Wright. What a fabulous future Kate Bates has ahead of her. Just 20, she takes gold. Australia found it hard against Malaysia in the women's 25-metre pistol pairs final. Lolita Yuliskaya and Linda Ryan were the strong first two rounds. They smashed 759 out of 800 targets. Malaysia was just as impressive, hitting one target less. New Zealand refused to crack under the pressure of a final but couldn't quite match it with 749. Down to the business end of the competition and New Zealand was ruining the ones that got away. Malaysia in front by nine targets. Enter Australia, a new Commonwealth Games record of 1150 and a shiny new prize, gold. Timothy Lowndes and Samuel Whelan had their fingers crossed their strength in the prone position would ensure them a medal in the men's 50 metre rifle three position pairs. Their wish came true with an outstanding first round, top scoring with 786. Their most troubled position standing came natural to the English. On their hands and knees in the third, this Australian duo blitzed the field again with a top score of 769 another gold medal to Australia. England claimed silver while India took bronze. I'll be against ordinary opposition. Here they go again and one more. No one to Maddie Smith and that brings up the 20. So the curtain comes down on what is a record breaking performance for Australia in recent times. <laughs> uh, fabulous scenes, you'd think they'd won. I love a celebration like that. Australia's 19 gold win is the biggest in Commonwealth Games history. There were 40 gold medals decided overnight and one of the biggest questions was would Cathy Freeman's return to international competition in the 4x400 metres be successful? Beckford's run a good leg. The Australians have run well, Freeman gets the baton, they're in fourth place, she's got out pretty strongly. And the Jamaicans have dropped the baton, the Jamaicans have pulled up, the world champions are out. Wow, Freeman's in front as they go down the back straight. That's a familiar position for Cathy Freeman. Nigeria, Akahibi has got the baton for the Australians, the race is wide open. The world champions are out. So Yana Pittman's going to get the baton in the best shape of her life. The Olympic silver medalist Lorraine Fenton is not going to be in this. Lewis rises to the challenge. She comes down to the handover. She's going to be in front just. She hands over to Yana Pittman. For England, it's Lisa Miller, the junior. The Australians are in a fantastic position here. What an effort. What a surprise this will be. Pittman goes clear. She's going to get her second gold medal. England are in second, Nigeria third, Yana Pittman has combined with Cathy Freeman, Lauren Hewitt and Yana Pittman to win the gold. The Australians are jubilant. That is unbelievable. Men's 200 metre freestyle final, Thorpe in four, Hackett five, Cram in one. So Thorpe normally gets a great start. He's up well, Hackett alongside of him and Rick Say on the other side. So Thorpe leads Hackett, Say, Johns, Cram, top of screen. Here's Thorpe. Now his world record split is 24.81. Hackett trying to go with him early. So let's see where Ian is at 50. He's inside at 24.63. Hackett just three tenths of a second back. Yeah, that's very fast for Grant, but it's the right way for him to do it. He's trying, Grant, here. He's not going to let uh, Thorpey get away. 
He's trying not to anyway, put it that way. He's about a half a body length. He's still at the feet and at the waist there, in the in between there. And that's what we call keeping in touch. He's in touch with, with Ian right now. It's very good swimming from Grant. 51.45 was the world record split. So Thorpe is a tenth of a second inside, but Hackett making a real race of this. Excellent for Grant. Really good swim. Thorpe leads by half a body length from Hackett. They're clearly in front of Say and Johnston. Thorpe just stretching it away a little. About three quarters, almost a body length over Hackett. Now the split here is 118, 26 for world record. Is he inside? One one hundredths, just inside. Hackett a body length behind. Hackett having a great swim here, putting it to Thorpe. Thorpe body, body length over Hackett. Hackett trying to get close enough to worry him, but Thorpe away. He's beaten Hackett off. Can he beat the clock now? Thorpe a body length in front. 144.06 is going to be so close. It's 144.71. It's 21.2. Hackett's had a wonderful swim. Say in third place. Here's the start list for the 50 backstroke. Matt Welsh from lane four. So they're away, Welsh in four, Rolf in two, and Van der Zandt in one there, the Australians. Zamberg three, and James in lane five. Lane six, Lynn got a terrific start. Welsh is right there, but Lynn's in front at halfway in lane number six. Matt's got plenty to do. James alongside of him. This is going to be close. Welsh is coming up. Lynn just leads from Welsh. There's not much in this. Welsh's power coming through. It's going to be touch and go. Lim or Welsh, they hit it. Matt's got it. Welsh got up to beat Lim. It was close, but he got there. <laughs> right the, on the line. The touch decided it. I thought it might do that. Uh, a great swim for Matt, too. I think he's really, he's near a PB, uh, unshaved. So that really looks good for him for the 100. Let's go to the 50 metres fly. Nicole Irving next to Thomas in lane five. Once again, here's Don Talbot and Bruce McAvaney. Here's our number one, the Commonwealth record holder. <laughs> Already a bronze medalist in the 200. Taking on a massive program here for Tria Thomas, 26 years of age. Nicole Irving's been in wonderful form, personal best in the heat and the semi finals. She's down to 27 1 9, 19 years of age. Thomas in four, Irving in five. So the start's critical here, so is the finish. Patria Thomas looks to have got a good start. Nicole Irving away well. Alison Shepard just back a little and Mandy Lutz. Thomas in front of halfway from Irving and Shepard. Lutz back just a bit. The two Australians look to be one, two, though Shepard's not far away. Thomas just leads. Irving and Shepard try to go to her. Patria's got a good break. Irving closing a little. Now Patria goes away. Thomas is going to win. It's close for second. Irving gets second. Terrific swim. <laughs> Yeah, what a terrific swim. Very, very good. Patria, Commonwealth Games record, a PB. You're just getting faster and faster. How are you doing it? I don't know, maybe with age. I'm not sure, Hayley. I'm just really enjoying the racing, and it's great that Australia could go one-two in that one. A good, a good uh, start for the evening. To squash in Australia, Sarah Fitzgerald has won everything but a Commonwealth Games gold medal. Four years ago, she won silver in Kuala Lumpur and today ran into former doubles partner Carol Owens, who now plays for New Zealand in the final. Sarah Fitzgerald has won the gold medal for Australia. Three games to one. Magnificent performance from the lady who has won a record 58 career titles. She's the World Open champion, the British Open champion. She won silver in Kuala Lumpur four years ago and she has now won the gold medal for Australia. Australian track cyclist Sean Eady has never been in better form, the veteran breaking the Commonwealth Games record in qualifying for the men's sprint. In the final, he took on countryman Ryan Bailey, 13 years his junior. It's the best of three races, and it was one apiece going into the final showdown. Now, I wonder if Bailey thinks he's too fast for Edie. If he does, he will go early again. That's how he caught him last time. He and here he goes, Edie for the inside, which he wants. 
Oh. And he shut him out, or has nice. he? Because of the bell, he's come again now. He's going to have to watch his line here. At the, at the one lap to go, he should be OK. But look at the speed here as he goes this time. Now, can Ryan come over the top of him? It looks like he's going to give him a run for his money as they swing into the home straight. Now, it's a desperate run by Edie. And, oh, oh this sprint competition won't lie down. Watch the lift here. The wheel is off the floor. I've never oh. seen that. Watch, where's it going? He's won it. He has won it. That's a great result. The trackies will be absolutely delighted with their form here. Like the road riders taking first, second and third in the men's time trial, the sprinters have done it here in Manchester. July was a roller coaster month for Australia's Brad McGee. He won a stage of the Tour de France, then two days later crashed through a barbed wire fence on a big descent. He made it into the, to the finish in Paris, he struggled a little bit, and arrived in Manchester to take on the 4,000 metres individual pursuit. We pick up the action with five laps to go. Manchester, look at the speed he is closing in. He's 4.7 seconds ahead now at two kilometres. We're only half distance. There could be a catch coming our way here. Well, he rides 4.18 to set a new record in the previous ride. He went through the two kilometres in, in, in the 3.10. So he's absolutely on the fly. Well, what more can you say about Brad McGee except salute this man of courage and strength. He does not know how to say no to competition. He's done it before in Sydney in the games where he was disappointed with his third. He's waving to the crowd. He is racing up behind one of the greats of world pursuiting, I'll tell you. Silver medalist, Olympic medalist, and he's coming right up on Bradley Wiggins. The catch will end the race. Will he go for a he record? Wins, I don't no. think he will. No, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna going. go. He's, he's gonna, gonna go. go. He was 2.10 at 2K, that's two, kil two oh. seconds up on a 4.18, so he's on 4.16 pace at the moment. Well, he has caught him in 10 laps of the track. Absolutely formidable cycling. He's continuing, not because he has to, the gold medal is his. It's because he wants to go out with the gold and the record, which he already has, but he wants to make it more. 418.194 now, his coach is having trouble seeing that. As yep. he now continues on, Mike, we are approaching now the third kilometre in 312. What's that? Well, he's just 0.6 of a second faster than his 418, so it's going to be a line ball. He really has to dig deep this last section of the race. For now three Commonwealth Games, he's won gold, and he's going to keep where he came in at this one with a Commonwealth record at top of the start sheets in four years' time. Can he break the record? That's a big question. 4.18.194 is the record. So down the back straight. Oh, it's it's going to be close. desperately close. He's going to shave this if he can sprint off this track. The crowd is standing. This is fantastic. Yes. Oh, 4.16.358. It has been a perfect day for Bradley McGee. One of Australia's most popular shooters, Michael Diamond, was in action on day six at Bisley in the men's trap singles. The competition remained tight until midway through when trouble struck for Michael Diamond. Oh. Oh. A miss there for Diamond. That's a rarity. Diamond's miss didn't change much. He retained a healthy lead. Missing targets became contagious with David Gillies and Thomas Allen weighing out of the debate. Off it goes into the distance without being hit. Adam Vella maintained oh. his accuracy. Vella assures himself of a medal. Michael Wixey's form dropped off. Out of medal contention, misses again. And while Sultan experienced a few troubled moments. Just dropped one shot so far. Oh. Until then. A problem it seemed he couldn't shake off. Oh. And has just lost his momentum now. Having not missed a shot so far, the pressure was on Vela to keep himself oh. focused. Vela assures himself of a medal. Diamond remained two shots clear in the final round, and while Sultan had only missed three shots, keeping him in contention for a medal. Finishes off with a hit, and that'll be a bronze medal. Vela finished off in style. Who gets a 100% record in the final. Diamond was able to produce this for gold. No problems at all. Excellent shooting by the Australians who finish in one and two. The goal to Michael Diamond, who only dropped two shots in the entire competition to set a new Commonwealth Games record of 148. And comes into this men's shot put final, Justin Anlazak, as one of four men 
of the 12 in the final with a personal best this season of over 20 metres. And so far, he's been the only one likely to go close to his PB. Winds up, trying to extend his lead, and he may have done it. What a performance this is in the men's shot put final by the Australian Justin Anlazak, the Australian record holder with 23-5, his season's best, 22-6. And he may just have improved on that. 22-9, season's best, and just short of his personal best, competition leader, gold medal spot, the Australian. Australia has never won a medal in judo at a Commonwealth Games. But our chances rose drastically when Hungarian-born Maria Peckley decided to call Australia home. Peckley reached the final against Scotland's Jenny Bryan in the 57 kilogram division. It became a sudden death competition after Naya Judoka had scored in the final five minutes allowed. Then goal to Peckley after she floored the Scot, scoring two Wazaaris to nothing. Olympic bronze medalist and now Commonwealth champion Maria Peckley. Jenny Bryan with silver there and bronze each to the semi-finalist Sophie Cox of England and Canada's Lucy Balagian. And another first, Australia in the 73 kilogram men's final. Tom Hill of Canberra, six-time national champion, was up against Christo Christodolides of Cyprus. No score until the final Shi'i. Hill with one Wazari, a half point. A second Wazari? and Hill the winner by Ippon, which is one point. Tom Hill with our first men's gold in judo. Away, Gardner got a good start for the English, so did Freda for Jamaica, and Tim Williams is running a good leg. As we get close to the first change, Gardner has probably got England away to the best start. Nigeria just well, and along with Trinidad and Tobago, the Australians are right in this. Jamaicans have run a great leg down the back straight. Dwight Thomas, they have gone off early though. Williams gets the baton. The Australians are in it along with England, Trinidad and Tobago. It's going to be pretty tight here. The Australians are running a great race. England just in front of Jamaica, Australia, and then back on the inside, it's Canada. What a race. Have a look at the Jamaicans. The English might get up here. Campbell, Jamaica, it's tight. Australia's got the bronze. Campbell thinks he's won the gold medal. A C for power ran a great race. For Jamaica, it is so close. We wait for the result. It's going to be pretty close here. Campbell's really stretching. You can hear what's happening in the background. I think we know who's won. What a dip. And England have got up. Well, at the moment, we've only got one name on the scoreboard, and it's England. Don't discount the fact that it's a dead heat here. It was so close. Oh, that is close to a dead heat. I would call it a... Well, they've got the same time, but they put the Jamaicans as second, so they have been Whoa. able to separate them. You know, we were always confident that uh, we could run well. First up is the men's 4x200 metres freestyle relay. A new look Australian team from the outfit that won gold in Sydney and at last year's World Championships. Grant Hackett took out the first leg, Leon Dunn the second, and we pick up the coverage as Dunn leads into Jason Cram. So Dunn bringing it home. Yep, Dunn it dropped about 0.6 on that last 50, which is a fair drop. And he's tiring now. He looks a little bit sluggish there, but he's pushing it in well. He's going to give Cram a start, and that's what we need. 3.37 the time there. Australia one and three quarter seconds up, and England over four seconds behind. So in goes Jason Cram. A 150.2 point, point about for Leon Dunn, which uh, is not as good as he's... It's about on par with his gun start time, but... When he gets the jump starts like this off the fly, he should be able to go about 0.7 quicker. So touches and gives Ian Thorpe the lead. It's a 1.3 second lead. So the torpedo into the water with Canada's Mike Matanko. They call him the tank, but um, he'd need an engine to catch Ian here. So the Australian team, a new look Australian team here of Grant Hackett with the new men, Leon Dunn and Jason Cram, and the familiar side of Ian Thorpe to anchor us home, have maintained our dominance in this event. Ian Thorpe coming home for a fourth individual gold medal. It's a Commonwealth Games record just inside the time they set in Kuala Lumpur. And Leon, 150.45, it must be very re rewarding for you to be a part of such a special team. Yeah, well, I've been uh, waiting for this for a long time. I've been hitting it out uh, year after year and finally get this chance. Now it's been fantastic. 
And it's getting close, I think. It is. Manning's brought him back. Have a look this time. Some big turns required by the strong men of England now, which is Paul Manning and Bradley Wiggins to bring this back on stream. Graham Brown driving through for Australia. They've gone through now with a lead of 1.4 at 3,000 metres, at 2,000 metres, sorry. 2-1, 6-7-1, Mike. 2-0-1, that's blistering pace. Have a look this time, we're looking at the split. It's still 1.4 seconds to Australia, so they've held the challenge to the two kilometre mark, which England are throwing out at this stage. Well, 58 second kilometres now by Australia. This is gonna blast the track apart if they keep this up. The record set in the warm-ups to this event at a four minutes, four second ride by Australia. They're absolutely flying. The lead is still 1.7 seconds now. Luke Roberts on the front, really going well. The English fair still holding four together, but they're well down. The Aussies have picked up another cog. Well, as they come into the home straight, we're looking at the English team now. There's the Australians gone through. Three minutes, 6.15 for 3,000 metres. They're flying. They're over two seconds up now. 1.7 now, so the English are coming back, they're responding. If they hold this, the Australians, the world record is at stake. And the only team to get inside four minutes is Germany and Sydney oh. in the 2000 Olympics. Now, surely they're not going to rip this track into a world record track with this team. They're flying at the moment. 1.9, the English are coming back. It's not over yet. They have looked this time. Going back over two and a half seconds, a brilliant turn by Australia. They're under 4.02 if they can keep going. We're well under 402. The Australians are running close to four minutes and they've lost one rider with a lap to go, but the time is on the third man. The rider they seem tail off is Mark Renshaw. This could be a world record by Australia as they grit their teeth. They can hear the commentary, I think, in the stadium. They it's stand up. Fight. It's a world record. It's a world record. 359, 430. It is a world record. Oh, well, we have to wait. That's a provisional time because of the adjustment. But look at that. They're breaking four oh, minutes. I don't believe it. They're, now, they round it down because yes. if the time is on the third man. And what has been happening here is oh. the clock has been stopping on the first rider. It's a technicality. So, absolutely no doubt, it is a Commonwealth Games record. But it could be a whisker. A world record it is. It is a world record. The stadium is on their feet. Absolutely unbelievable. Let's think about the time. Did you talk about the world record time beforehand? I think we joked about it after our qualifying <laughs> round that uh, we could find four seconds somewhere, but we brought uh, Luke Roberts in from the individual shoot-in for the final. And really, to, to ride under four minutes is, uh, is a pretty re respectable thing in cycling, and not many people get to do it. And I mean, this kind of team, is a team that's going to go to Athens and hopefully win Australia gold at the Olympics. It's more than respectable, but a great ride by Luke Roberts, Peter Dawson, Mark Renshaw and Graham Brown. So start list now for the men's 50 butterfly. Three Aussies, Adam Pine, Jeff Hugel and Brett Hawke here. He's from the Institute of Sport in Canberra and his wife's in the audience here all excited. There she is. So <laughs> Jeff Hugel here. Yeah. Effectively known as Skippy. Here's Brett Hawk now. Yeah, Brett Hawk there. In lane seven. Start vital. Hugo seemed to get off well. Foster's up the top. He got a good start. Sherman's out really quick in five. Yeah, yeah. And Hugo's in four. They are flying and Pines in three. And Foster's in one. Sherman and Hugo. Sherman may be just in front. Hugo's got some work to do here. And Foster's in lane one. This is close. Hugo's got up to Sherman. Foster in one. Touch. It's going to be a touch in it. Hugo comes yes. in. They hit it. Hugo's yeah. got it. <laughs> yes, Hugo yes. wins it from Sherman and Very Foster. Yep. What a race. Very good race. Here's the lineup for the 100 freestyle final. Three Australians, Jody Henry, Sarah Ryan, Patria Thomas. So just watch for Jody Henry and see where she comes up. The start, very important. She's back. She's last out of the water, Jody Henry. Closest to us, Patria Thomas. Shepard got a good start. Ryan, leg. Now Henry coming through the water. Pickering going well in two. Muller back a bit. 
Henry's back end is so strong. Probably Pickering and Shepard at halfway. Thomas not far away. Henry starting to gather them in. Here's the turn. Shepard from Ryan Marshall. Henry turned in fifth place, half a second away. She's got a lot of work to do here. You think Thomas will be pretty strong as well. Ryan is right up there with Shepard and Pickering. Now Henry in lane four coming through. You can see you can put a blanket over them. Shepard closest to us. Henry steaming through in lane four. Has taken the lead. Jody Henry, 18 years of age. Muller coming yeah. with all leg. Henry's in front. Muller the danger. Henry going for it. Touches. Gets it. Henry's won it. Muller second. Leg third. This is sort of my first major competition. Something individually and I really haven't done much. Sort of I'm not some big champion that has to prove anything. So the future of Australian sprinting Jody Henry with a fine performance there for the gold. There's the start list for the final of the 200 breaststroke. Lisa Jones, Kelly Waite and Brooke Hanson in four, five and six. Here's Kelly Waite. And Brooke Hanson in lane number six. Final of the women's 200 breaststroke. So the Australians are loaded up here. Liesl Jones not first off the block. She goes from lane four. Kelly Wade in five and Brooke Hanson in six. Yeah, I think that, as I've said before, that Liesl has one of those Jody Henry starts that they've got to work on. But she's up there already. She, she act, it actually is improving. She's not losing nearly as much ground as she used to. So Jones now bringing it home. A body length and a bit in front of Pavey of South Africa. So 16-year-old Liesl Jones leads by a body length from Sarah Pavey of South Africa, it's Jones and Pavey clearly in front. Waite and Hanson are having a real battle there for third place for Australia. But Jones is going to win the gold here. Clearly in front of Pavey, a real scrap going on between Waite and Hanson. Jones coming home and Elisal Jones brings it home in 225.93. Second Pavey, Kelly Waite gets third and Brooke Hanson gets fourth. Yeah, very good time for Liesl. 2.25.93. She looked like she might go a little bit better, but it was a great time just the same. Munza and Mears, one heat each. So this is the decider for the gold medal. Now, incidentally, since the, we've seen Mears win the second match, even though she won it, she received an official warning for riding her partner off the track. Now, in the previous heat, she was relegated because she's won both the heats so far, uh, but she was relegated in the first one. That meant that Lorianne ann Munzer got the victory there. So it, that's the reason it's won all. Munzer has not, in fact, won any of the heats so far. And whoever wins this one takes the gold medal. Loser takes silver. As she now comes to the bell, she's still lying off the back, but the pace significantly increased now. She's letting the Canadian woman go first. She needs to go. Into the 200 metres. She's riding it high to wait for the dive to the bottom. Now she's still staying above that red sprinter's line as they go into the last 100 metres. Now it's all or nothing for the gold medal, and here comes Mears. Mears has all of the speed she needs. There's no doubt about that one, and that's how you do it. And she has taken the gold medal. So, on a magical night in the velodrome for Australia, Kerry Mears has won gold over Laurie Ann Munzer of Canada, while her sister Anna has taken home the bronze. Still at the track, the men's 20km scratch race requires all lap riders to retire from the race. In the final stages, we're left with Australia's Graham Brown up against the three best from Wales, England and New Zealand. Oh, oh, and there he goes. That's Tony Gibbers gone for you. He's got a terrific no. yaw. Brown, he's got to come inside. Uh, one and a half laps to go as the bell comes now. Gibbers decided to give it his best shot, but he's put Graham Brown on his wheel. Brown followed by Pitchard. Pitchard hanging on to Brown. Is Wales going to get their first gold medal since time began as they chase Pitchard and Brown? Brown is coming up. You'll never stop Brownie. This is Australia's night. Their third gold medal in the three finals tonight and the second gold medal for Graham Brown and he now has the 20 kilometer scratch to go with his world record which was uh, about an hour and a yeah. quarter ago what a recuperative man Damien Brown the maths are simple he can't take the gold in the snatch by virtue of his 145 kilo lift because he has a higher body weight than Dave Morgan this is a games record equaling lift at 147 and a half. 
He must lift it to take the gold. Technique. He's got it. <laughs> Superb. So gold to the 32-year-old Brown in the snatch. Can they do something here? Perhaps pull off a miraculous come from behind draw and take it to extra time. Dobson. Bang. She gets one. 30 seconds remaining. They've got to force another penalty corner now. Must force a penalty corner. All they get is a corner. And woe betide the ball boy. There is no ball over that side of the field. Not getting it on quickly. Just so close for Trini Powell. Five seconds. And it's been awarded against the Australians. England have won a famous victory for England in the Commonwealth Games. Trish Hebley and her coaching staff are delighted. A shock defeat to the Hockey Roos going down to England 2-1. Timothy Lowndes headed into the final in third spot and nothing changed after their first series. Hen still in second place, Lowndes third. An enthusiastic Lowndes produced a more impressive second round with 10.4. Leg three, 10.4. Helps him keep in contact with the gold and silver medal place people. Michael Babb from England set the pace. Jaco Hen was also in outstanding form. A consistent aim ensured consistently good scores and the Australian hit the front. 10.4 for Tim Lowndes. The final stage turned into a nail-biting finish with an audience loving every minute. The Australian fought off Michael Babb from England, breaking the Commonwealth Games record with 699.8. Lowndes obviously had friends in the audience to see him proudly collect his third medal of the Commonwealth Games so far. Yula Sky's complete focus paid off. Not only did she claim her second gold medal of the Games, but she smashed the existing Commonwealth record. Well, the 100 freestyle final, there's been great anticipation. Ian Thorpe in lane four, Todd Pearson up in two, and Ashley Callis in six. So, Thorpe in the middle. Kid next to him with knees link. Thorpe's up fast. Callis is in lane six and Pearson's in lane two. Ian had a great start, really got out on those people and Rick Neithling, in fact, he was ahead of him. And our quiet man in lane two is right up there. That's Todd Pearson. Here's the turn. Thorpe's in front. Turns mm. now, just over Callis. Pearson's in fifth place. Seven one hundredths to Callis, eight one hundredths to Neithling. <laughs> Thorpe streaked here. Callis having a terrific swim closest to us without the cap. Thorpe powering with 25 to go. Needling and Callis are trying to go with him. Thorpe hanging on. Callis challenging late with Needling. Thorpe going for a fifth gold medal here. He's got it. He's got it all right. Callis will probably get second. Thorpe's got it. Wins the gold over Callis and Needling and breaks the Commonwealth Games record. Yeah, fantastic swim. Up they come now for the women's 100 butterfly. Patria Thomas looking at a bit of Commonwealth Games history here. In the middle lane. Clean start. So Patria Thomas in lane four and Rachel Coffey in lane seven. Patria got a really good start in the centre. She leads from Button and Lutz who are surrounding her. The Canadian and the South African. Rachel Coffey, you can see close to us. Here's Patria Thomas flying down the first 50. She looks good. She was really fast out of the out of the dive. She's got a half a body length on everybody right now and very powerful in the wall. Let's see if she hits the wall clean. Turns in 27.56. She's got a half a second over them. Yes, and a good clean touch. Very good. So Patria Thomas clearly in front of Mandy Lutz, Jennifer Button, Rachel Coffey having a pretty good swim in lane seven. But Patria Thomas here by a body length over Mandy Lutz and also Jennifer Button, Rachel Coffey not far away from the medals. Patria Thomas looking at Commonwealth Games history here. The first ever female to win the same event in three Commonwealth Games and she's doing it in great style. Patria's home and wins and creates some history. <laughs> Well, back to the men, and it's the 400 metres individual medley. We pick up the race with Justin Norris qualifying third fastest. Down to two tenths. Johns leads Norris and yeah. Parkin. 
So what a race we've got going on here. Don Talbot said, this is a race for the tough men. We are seeing that now. Illustrated in graphic fashion. This is tough. Johns, can he win Canada's first goal? Can Norris get a second individual goal for Australia? Norris moves up to him. I reckon he's taken Justin. him. Justin Norris goes to Brian Johns. Norris takes the lead and wins a second goal medal. Yes. <laughs> he's done it and broken the Commonwealth Games record. What a second half of the swim. He's got them all standing and you barrack him. Well, he now qualifies as a tough man because that was hard. Tonight I felt really average in the warm up. Had a terrible sleep today. We had to get up for a team photo at four o'clock. So, I'm bloody stoked with that one. Now this is the final track event of the series of this year's Commonwealth Games. England have never won a track male medal for 28 years. Gold medal I'm talking about. And this is their last chance. And a terrific kick on the left there by this big man, Sean Eady, one of the colourful characters of world cycling. And he's always good at opening up with a fast one. But, and it looks to me as though marginally Eady has got the start on the English team here because he's got the lead at the, at the turnover, 17-8-7 oh, by Australia. This is going to be a tremendous time by either side here. And the man for man around the track, which is what we expected. At the bell now, Australia still up by two tenths of a second. Now it's down to the sprint between Ryan Bailey and Jason McLean. And it is going to be who can get home quicker. And it's going to be a, a Nats whisker on the line. Australia have done it again. And they have put England once more into silver medal right on the line. Australia leave these games looking back at nine gold medals so far in cycling. Six silver, five bronze, 20 in all. Alex Kopechin, it's been a long, long time since we've seen him on the stage. Every other lifter has come out and completed their full clean and jerk routine. We know he's nursing a hand injury. He ripped apart a callus on his right hand. He was treated. The Australians in the ideal world want him to lift only once. A successful lift here will give him the full set of gold medals at the Commonwealth Games. He came in as a raging hot favourite. There's 197 and a half kilos on the bar. Oh, he's powerful, isn't he? He didn't even bother going into the conventional split. Look at that. Three white lights. I wonder if we'll see him again. I wonder if he'll have a crack at records now. But it's gold, gold, gold. That man stops, turns, and scores. I think you can consider the ankle tested. It's pretty good. <laughs> There's the ball for England over the top to Murphy, the captain. The space was behind Ellis. Find, Murphy not confident. Find Steed, the former Kiwi international. Margin drops to five. Murtar shuts it down, playing in a 110th game for England. Great ball from Tracy Neville. Just four now. England threatening again. McMahon has it. Southby looking for better position for her partner. Beautiful shot. Cool, little relief in the Australian camp. Australia having to work hard to make progress down court. Oh, lovely work from Delaney. And from McMahon. That's the full-time whistle. 49 to 38. Australia successful. A margin of 11 goals. Australia into the gold medal match after fending off a spirited English team who was spurred on by a vocal home crowd. Here's the start list for the 100 backstroke. Talk about showbiz. There's an X factor in this race, isn't there? Matt Welsh and Ian Thorpe. Well, Don, is it, is it, if Welsh swims his best, can Thorpe produce something out of the box and win? Well, we've seen him do that, but I don't know. I haven't seen enough of his backstroke. I've seen him swim Goodwill Games for us. 
where he let off the relays and did a great job. And Matt has been a little bit below his best, uh, but he realises now that he's going to have to do it and establish himself uh, because, you know, you open the door for Ian Thorpe, he crashes through. I feel like we're going into the unknown here. It's very exciting. Yes, but there's some other good swimmers in here too. Alex Lim is good. 100 backstroke final. Welsh Thorpe Rolf. Start vital for Ian Thorpe here. He looks to have got out well. Matt Welsh probably just in front of Lim, who's a fast starter. Thorpe close enough early. And then Tate. And we can see Rolf. Welsh in the centre. There's Thorpe. He's got five gold medals so far at this Commonwealth Games. Welsh is going to need a half a second start on Thorpe to get back and hold him off. He's, he's not going to get that much, but he's going to get a start. This turn is very important because Thorpe will be fast under the water. Well, seven tenths in the end. Yes, OK, seven tenths. That might be nearly enough to keep him there. He's got to work it back. Welsh but leads. Lehman's coming up. He's racing too. Good race here. Thorpe with so much to do. Welsh leads from Lim. And then Thorpe. Welsh holding on strongly. Thorpe starting to fly very late. Welsh is going to win though. Thorpe steaming home. Welsh has got it. Second Thorpe and third Lim. Commonwealth Games record to Matt Welsh. He wanted that so badly. Yes, yeah, a great swim, 54-72. Good swim. Really good. Ian Thorpe's done his fastest time ever. Yeah, I was going to say, nothing wrong with 55-38 for him. He, he, he got second, he touched Lim, and, uh, and you would have bet on him he was behind. But one and two for those guys, that's good backstroking. And now the pose. <laughs> Can't beat him in the pool, I'll beat him in the photo. Why not? Here's the 100 butterfly with Adam Pine and Jeff Hugel here in three and four. Hugel last to go down with Hickman. Start vital. Hugel in the centre without the cap. Comes up well. And Matanko next to him with Hickman and also Pine just behind. Yes, yeah, smooth fast is the secret here. Out as smooth as you can be, fast as you can be, but... In a way, easy. It's easy more between your ears than anywhere else. Montanko going out very fast there with Jeffrey. Coming to the wall now. Good turn in and out. Who's going to get the best turn? Very important to come out on the break in front. Jeff's up. He is just in front of Montanko. It's close, though. Pines in about fourth place with Hickman third. Hugo leads with 25 to go. Mintanko trying to challenge. Pine fourth with Hickman third. Hugo leads Mintanko. Good shot of them there. Hugo's hanging on. Mintanko doesn't look like he'll get him. Hugo drawing away from Mintanko. Pine's going to get another medal. Hugo wins. Takes the gold. Mintanko second. Pine third. Australia one and three. And here's the 200 individual medley final with Justin Norris of Australia in lane four. Take your mark. So this first 100 critical, each 50 critical, obviously, we're into the butterfly. Johns and Norris, the two form competitors here, but Turner's been very strong of England in lane three, and so is Kent from New Zealand. Here's Norris down the first 50. Yeah, good. Norris is taking his fly out of Johns, and they're, they're, you know, they're out there, but, but Johns is the backstroker there, and, and next to Johns is Kent, and he's a good backstroker. G. Miden's had a big start here from yeah, lane number yeah, eight. Yeah, very good. Turns in front. He hasn't shown us much, Biden. So this is the critical 50 now for Justin Norris to hang on to Brian Johns and Curtis Biden. Well, Biden's, you know, he's the outside smoker, and they won't be aware of him too much. And he, he's a very good breaststroker. If he gets in close here, he's going to be like Norris. Got out doing well in lane two as yeah, well. Yeah, he. This is. Look at the line of them here. It's almost eight abreast. Although lane two has taken a break there, but he, he's shown us that he can't breaststroke very well. He's the gold medalist in the 200 back. Stroke got out, so that had to be his best. Norris turns fourth. Norris leads clearly. Turner's challenging from England in lane number three. Norris in front of the two Englishmen. Norris going for a big three here. He's already got two gold medals. He's got a third one here. Norris is away from Turner and also got out. What a swim. Best time for him. There's the, there's the trifecta for us for the night to finish. We only want one more to get that quadrifecta. <laughs> what a Commonwealth Games he's having. Speaking of depth, Australia's got it here in lanes 3, 4, 5. Tani White, Liesl Jones, Brooke Hands and women's 100 breaststroke. Well, here's Tani White, bronze medalist in the 50. She really set up her uh, Commonwealth Games with her very first swim. 
Which was a good one, yeah, 31 she, 74 at the yeah, time. Yeah, she did that. And, you know, and Brooke had been fast too. Yeah, she looked happy. Well, here's Liesl Jones, gold medalist in the 200, looking for the 100 200 double here. A little bit more somber, but, but she is getting herself ready. There's a little enigmatic smile, you know. The Mona Lisa of swimming foremost, I think. Her mum Rosemary yeah. in the middle there. Now, Brooke Hansen. Yeah, Brooke. She looked terrific she uh, on the way through. She swam her best time ever in the semi of 69 seconds. So the Australians in 3-4-5. Final of the women's 100 best. Yeah, Let's see how Lisa particularly gets away. She can be a little vulnerable at the start at times. Brooke Hansen, arguably the best away from Lisa Jones and Tani White. The Australians are showing out early. Sarah Pave is there in lane number two. And the Canadian girl, uh, Rhiannon Lear, she went out, she had, a good, she had the best start. Came out of the start with a really good forward movement, but Lisa going to it now and says Tani. They're moving away a little bit. Uh, Brooke has dropped off the pace a little bit, but is not far back. So at the turn, Liesl Jones over Tani White. Brooke Hansen in fourth place with Sarah Bavay in third. Jones, the Australian record holder, leads by that half a body length from White. And Hansen coming up a bit here. So Jones in front of White challenging Bavay and Hansen. Jones not far in front, White coming out of They train together. White challenging and Hansen closest to us and then Bavay. Jones hanging on. White trying to get to her. Pavey top of screen. Hands are closest to us. Jones just hanging on here. Can Australia win it? Pavey's the danger. Pavey flying. Hayward down low. Jones hanging on. She gets there. Liesl's won it. Brooke Hanson gets a medal for the first time. And Pavey gets third. Right at the end there, Tani lost it. She floated the touch. Cost on the touch. Cost to the second place. Here's the result. Liesl Jones over Brooke Hansen and Sarah Pave, Tani White fourth, Australia one, two and four. Great expectation here for the final of the women's 50 backstroke. Australians in three and four, England in five. There's Caleb in four. Almost set. Take your mark. Start vital. Price in five. Carol's a fast starter, we know that. Caleb in the middle and Rooney on top of her. Lane one, Whitsock got a great start. Great start here from Carol of Canada, clearly in front yeah, of Price. Very, very good. And also Caleb and Rooney, so much to do for the others. Carol in front, Canada hasn't got a gold medal. Caleb and Rooney are steaming home though, and so is Price. It's going to be a touch it, and Lane one's up there as well. Caleb with a flashing finish. They hit it. Caleb won Caleb it. Win. She won it good from girl. Carol and Price and Rooney. What a finish. Did she have to dig deep there? Priya Cooper joins me for the men's 100 EAD or multi-disability freestyle final. It's exciting here, Priya. Welcome again, Ben Austin. How good has he been? He is an awesome swimmer. So he's in lane four. Can he win a second gold here? Swim another world record. Take your ball. So the key for Ben here is to stay as close as he can. He won't be the first man home. He won't be, but he's got to really dig in and make sure that his breathing stays even in this, in this swim. Because if he messes up his breathing, having one arm, it can really set his rhythm out. Get a good shot of him there, Priya. Now we go back to the wide shot, but uh, and we see that uh, Crisp is going well and uh, Gagnon going really well. And Ben turns now, so Gagnon probably turned in front with Field and then Ben in about fifth place. But that doesn't mean he can't get the gold. No, he's looking like he's on world record pace. So Huo up the top of Canada and S10. And Gagnon closest to us and then Field. Now Ben is an S8, so he's just got to stay in touch. But Huo looks like he's having a really fast swim here in lane number two. Time's about to come up. Ben Austin almost about to finish. He's got to get a good touch in here. Does now. But here is the result. Ben Austin, Scott Field and David Roberts. See the world records there. And then a games record for Darren Leach. Ben, world record in the 50 and now in the 100. Your preparation for this must have been spot on. Yeah, it's just it definitely been spot on. And uh, I was hoping to... I was aiming for 59 today. It's no secret, but... I went faster this morning, so I'm pretty happy with that. 
game one, the Acropolis C Cup, but there's little doubt that for both of these boys, this is the biggest fight of their careers in front of 8,000 fans. And for Commonwealth Games gold medal, they've been few and far between for Australia over the years. We've won just eight. Seven men responsible for them. Tony Madigan, the light heavyweight who fought Ali in the Rome Olympics, has picked up two in 58 and 62. So Justin Kane looking to join a very exclusive club. 24 seconds to go. If it finishes even, it goes to a count back, and that is the total of all of the punches from the individual judges' scorecards. Oh, he's walked into a big one. Well, the last punch is going to win it. Who will get the last blow of this fight? We have a count back. The winner and Commonwealth bantamweight champion with a count back score of 120 to 113 from an original score of 34-34, representing Australia. Daniel Gill in the red. Kamali Zulu, he knows he's behind. He's going to come from everywhere. Well, he's throwing lever left, right and centre, and he's picked up a couple of points. He's picked up three, in fact. Danny Gill has to make sure that while he's running, he's picking up points. He's got to keep moving, certainly. But he's got to keep doing that as well. Getting himself first to the punch on occasion and then waiting to counter and covering up. This is good boxing from Gill. Another good right hand. He's back out to six again and the left will score surely. His wins in every round here have been decisive. He's clearly been the best boxer in the division. And Danny Gill is now the owner of a gold medal. And you can tell that he knows. He doesn't have to look at the scorecard. Good combination. Doing enough to keep Birch away from him. And then covering up when Birch comes. The right hand was slipped by Birch just off the side of the face. That's his second warning. For dropping his head. And he's pulled six points in front. Birch has got it back to five. But that is a third gold medal to Australia. And indeed, rain has started to fall here now on the last half lap of this 16-lapper. And Stuart O'Grady, who broke clear with 39 kilometres to go, is now halfway round the final 11 and a half. And all of the time, he is pulling away from the chase group. The last time check we got, he was 2 minutes 51 seconds ahead. He's going to enjoy this. I thought he might because the man from Adelaide has come back big time here. He wanted this so badly. Robbed four years ago of the time trial when he crashed. Now he's come back to the road race from the Tour de France. He's got all the time in the world. He's got two minutes to enjoy this before anybody else comes into view. And when that man comes into view, it'll be his mate, Cadell Evans from Victoria. So Stuart O'Grady takes the gold medal four and three quarter hours today. There were 29 gold medals decided on the 10th and final day of competition in Manchester. And we'll start in the pool with the men's four by 100 metre medley relay. Matt Welsh swam the backstroke, Jim Piper the breaststroke, and we join the race as butterfly Jeff Hugel leads into Ian Thorpe, who's chasing his sixth gold medal at these games. Chasing, Hugo does his job, Thorpe into the water, chasing six goals. It's 1.9 the margin. A 52 plus for, for Jeffrey, which is a good solid swim. He comes in though, he's going for it. No doubt about that, they want that record too, that 338 should go. 
Thorpe to turn. Australia's lead is nearly two seconds over England, who are shaking off Canada and South Africa. The underwater shot. He set this centre alight on the first line when he broke the world record in the 400. A record equaling sixth gold medal for Ian Thorpe here. Certainly a Commonwealth record. He's stretching away and they smash the Commonwealth Games record. They turn it inside out. England second and Canada third. These guys put in a great performance tonight and this team's really come together well. I mean, Jimmy backing up tonight after the 200, it was awesome. And that's the win with these guys. It was just a privilege tonight. The men's 1500 metres. Grant Hackett's the new king. He's the current World Olympic and Commonwealth Games champion and was joined in the final by Craig Stevens. We joined the race in the closing stages. Here comes Grant now into the wall. Yeah, still on a 60 point. So Stevens and Smith it back to Hackett inside the last hundred. We'll see you can pull out the big ones here. <laughs> It's, almost, it's about eight tenths of a margin now between yeah. Smith and Stevens. The underwater shot of Hackett. Yes. Dominated this race from the first 50. Turning now. 15 minutes, still the magical barrier in 1500 metres swimming. What a litany of champions we have had. A Commonwealth Games and Olympics from Conrad. And Smith is going away at the other end. He's got a break on, on Craig. I don't think Craig's got that maturity and power to go. So Smith looks like getting second, but from Conrad through to Hackett. From 58 through to 98, we've won them all. And Hackett bringing it home here again and sprinting to the line. 14.54. Way under the 15 minute barrier. He can relax and celebrate as Smith coming home now in second place for the silver. 15.07 and Stevens 15.09. World Champions Australia up against arch rival New Zealand. And this final was no anti-climax. 46 all after full time and we joined the match late in extra time. <laughs> oh, oh Ellis. Ellis. Lizzie Ellis. Enormous defence, Australia on the attack. They won't waste time, too much pride. They won't eat it up, they'll just keep attacking. 55. Australia's ball. This will put it beyond doubt. Time out, call to mop up the floor. <laughs> it's not the one we want. <laughs> we want a time out, but of a different quality. I'm, I'm, the timing has got me lost here. McMahon pauses for breath. 56 55. 57 55, and that is it. <laughs> Play continued beyond the full time because the score was dead level. One team had to win by two. That's the reason the clock oh, they kept, kept ticking. Them going. A shame they didn't tell anybody. Would have been nicer for them to tell us. <laughs> Australia have won. So many times we're out of that game, and the girls just kept in there and in there. And I can't believe how we can beat New, New Zealand this way so many times, but I'm so proud to be Australian, so proud to be Canada's team. It's unreal. It's a dream fulfilled for you, isn't it? Awesome. It's, it is, absolutely. If I die tomorrow, God forbid, I'll be a very happy girl. Australia's men's and women's hockey teams were expected to win gold in Manchester. The Hockey Roos finished up with bronze after a shock loss to England in the semis. But the Kookaburras managed to make it through to the final. They played New Zealand, who they beat 6-1 during the pool matches. Here are some of the highlights. Elder, clear shot. Oh, the deflection came off McCann, I think. Australia go, one goal up. Elder, geez, causing some trouble there, isn't he? Have a look at this. Australia, McCann, fantastic finish. Jamie Dwyer, just sensational. A great ball through. Mike McCann slips it to Jamie Dwyer, gets a second chance and gets a hat trick. Good Thank on. you very, very much. Troy Elder, Matthew Smith, keep the ball, Matthew. If you're retiring today, you deserve it. He is going to keep it. Matty Smith is retiring today after 166 appearances for Australia. 
Australia finishing with a record of 206 medals, 82 gold, 62 silver and 62 bronze. Really was an incredible achievement for our 368 athletes that we sent to Manchester. Now England finished in second place with their best ever haul of 165 medals. That old lottery worked. And one of the biggest surprises was India third with 32 golds on the tally ahead of Canada, who's had 31 golds. Although Canada overall tally was 114, it was the third highest in total. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the city of Manchester, welcoming you all to the final spectacular act of the biggest and best sporting event England has ever hosted. The closing ceremony of the 17th Commonwealth Games. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the head of the Commonwealth, Her Majesty the Queen, accompanied by His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. And so the Commonwealth prepares to celebrate the 2002 Manchester Games. Some 5,000 athletes and officials, a million spectators, a television audience of one billion people. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome team representatives and the flag bearers of the 72 nations whose athletes have thrilled and enthralled us for the last 10 days. Those representatives are joined by a 300-strong brass band who have come together from all over the Northwest. representative of each competing nation. Basil Zemplis joins us and uh, we're about to see the pride of these games, the winners of the medals and those who competed and didn't win but are here to celebrate regardless. All of them heroes in their very own way. We begin with Anguilla and their flag carried by Chris Pradell, cyclist at the head of the queue alphabetically and in so many other ways the Australians and no surprise, the flag bearer for Australia, the 19-year-old sensation of these games, Ian Thorpe. Six gold, one silver, and now has 10 Commonwealth Games gold medals, equaling the record held by fellow Australian Susie O'Neill. Maurice Hope from Antigua and Barbuda, the boxer, their flag bearer. Laverne Eve, who met the Queen earlier this evening from the Bahamas. Asif Hossein Khan from Bangladesh. Paul Ines from Barbados. Jeffrey Zayella from Belize. Abdurrahman Haji Omar from Brunei Darul Salaam. All of them have their own stories. They're not all gold medalists. They've all fought to get here to be on this international stage. From Jamaican Camp. Janelle Atkinson. A 19-year-old bronze medalist in the swimming, Jamaica's first swimming medal at the Commonwealth Games. From Canada, Lorien Munzer, cyclist. She won a silver in the sprint, a bronze in the 500 time trial. Karen Pickering carrying the flag for England in swimming. It's her fourth games, by the way. She won gold in the 200 freestyle relay and the four by in, in the four, sorry, the 200 freestyle and the four by 200 relay. New Zealand's Nigel Avery, as we get a look at what most of the competitors saw of Ian Thorpe, the back of him. His fellow swimmers know all about that. There's the Malaysians, so successful at these games, coming off their hosting duties in 1998. They really did turn in a very creditable performance. Also on the field for Australia, the chef de mission, Don Stockens, and our three athlete representatives, aside from Ian Thorpe carrying the flag, rifle shooter Timothy Lowndes, 
Catherine Harvey Williams, the captain of the netball team. Boy, what a heart stopper they had. And Kerry Mears, double gold medalist in cycling. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the Commonwealth Games Council for England, Ian Emerson. The chairman of the Commonwealth Games Federation, Michael Fennell. The chairman of the Manchester 2002 Organising Committee, Charles Allen. The Right Worshipful, the Lord Mayor of Manchester, Councillor Roy Waters. The Honourable Steve Brax, Premier of Victoria. And the chairman of the Melbourne 2006 Organising Committee, Ron Walker. The 17th Games have been superbly organised, and to everyone involved, our congratulations and thanks for a job well done. And now we turn our eyes to 2006 in Melbourne, Australia, where the 18th Commonwealth Games will be celebrated. Shortly, the flag of the Commonwealth Games Federation will be lowered and handed over to them. We have high expectations and every confidence that our athletes can be assured of another great celebration of Commonwealth sport in 2006. Michael Fennell. Lord Mayor, as Chairman of the Commonwealth Games Federation, I entrust this ceremonial flag to your care and ask that you now present it to the Premier of Victoria, Australia, which will be the host of the 18th Commonwealth Games in Melbourne in 2006. This duty I willingly do. The Honourable Steve Brax, Premier of Victoria. Your Majesty, what a marvellous festival of sport and culture we have just witnessed. Congratulations to every athlete, volunteer and official for making it so memorable. And to the people of Manchester, I say thank you for an outstanding Commonwealth Games. We will, we will build on your legacy when the Games come to Melbourne in four years' time. On behalf of the people of Melbourne, Victoria and all Australians, I accept the Commonwealth Games flag and the responsibility for the 18th Commonwealth Games. I invite you all to the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne in 2006. Please wish the best of luck to Melbourne! In the name of the Commonwealth Games Federation, I proclaim the 17th Commonwealth Games, Manchester 2002, closed. And in accordance with tradition, I call upon the sportsmen and sportswomen of the Commonwealth to assemble in four years' time in Melbourne, Australia, to celebrate the 18th Games. May they continue to display friendship and concord so that the spirit of our family of nations may be carried on with enthusiasm, courage and honour for the good of humanity and the peace of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Majesty the Queen will now leave the City of Manchester Stadium. It's been a privilege to welcome Her Majesty to Manchester in this, her Golden Jubilee Year. So let's join together one more time to congratulate and celebrate the head of the Commonwealth, Her Majesty the Queen.